I think I'm ready to film. Mm. Okay. This is the weirdest extinct animal ever discovered. Scientists have been trying to figure out what it is and what it's related to for decades. They call it the Tully Monster, alive 300 million years ago. The Tully Monster has some very strange and unique characteristics. They've got a trunk-like snout with a claw at the end. That's their mouth. It has two rows of teeth inside of it. And their eyes are on stalks that extend sideways. Those traits aren't seen on any other animal. So what? is the Tully Monster. Quick disclaimer, if you're expecting me to tell you what the Tully Monster is by the end of this video, don't. I don't know, nobody knows. But I will tell you all the possibilities and the evidence for each of them. So then you can tell me what you think it is at the end of the video because I currently honestly have no opinion. So it's time for the history of what the fuck is this? The Tully Monster was first found by a man named Francis Tully back in 1958 at a spot in Northern Illinois called Maison Creek. They have tons of concretions dating back to the Carboniferous period that was about 300 million years ago. And when split open, some of these concretions reveal fossils. In this case, Mr. Sully had found the fossil of an animal that had never been discovered. Koya, come on. You can't, you can't be in the bag right now. He brought it to the Field Museum of Natural History in Chicago for scientists to identify it. They said, we have no idea. And they started calling it the Tully Monster for the time being. And since then, thousands of Tully Monster fossils have been found. They determined it had a maximum length of 14 inches. It's got what looks like a vertical tail fin and a dorsal fin. And it's built like a torpedo. It was named Illinois State Fossil and it's been smacked onto the sides of U-Hauls. And we still don't know what it is. For the majority of the last 64 years, they have pretty much considered it an invertebrate, which is a safe bet with anything that looks like it came from a different planet. It's probably an invertebrate. Oh, let me actually make that distinction really quick. Vertebrates are animals with a backbone. That's like us, shrimp, no, oh my God, not shrimp, like us and birds and fish. And my snake Tina, invertebrates don't have a backbone. And that is the vast majority of animals on this planet. Insects, crustaceans, squid, jellyfish, urchins, and maggots. And because the two groups have been evolving separately for over half a billion years, they also function in drastically different ways. It's an enormous distinction to make. So the fact that we're still at this question of which category the Tully monster fits into just speaks to how mysterious this animal is. But like I said, for a long time, the Tully monster was considered an invertebrate. Scientists weren't able to find any traces of a backbone, and that's all they could really go off of at the time. They could just only look at the anatomy of the fossils. It was thought that they were maybe closer related to snails, I would assume because of the eye stalks thing, but the Tully monsters were sideways. And as technology advanced, the invertebrate idea got a bit rustled. In 2016, scientist Victoria McCoy and her research team at Yale seemed to find vertebrate characteristics using something called synchrotron elemental mapping. I really don't want to get into it. Koya, can you play with your toy anywhere else. Actually, let me just give you an overarching methods for the argument that's about to take place. Different teams of scientists shot light or radiation or lasers at the fossils to figure out the chemicals that were inside of them. I really don't wanna get into it. I don't like chemistry. I don't like elements. Chemistry was a very dark time for me in college. I don't wanna talk about it. So just, that's that's all I'm gonna say about it. Anyway, McCoy's team found traces of a notochord, which is a defining characteristic of vertebrates. If you ever took a class about vertebrates, I'm sure you have notochord, dorsal hollow nerve cord, pharyngeal gill slits, post anal tail, burned into your brain. And if you didn't take one, those are all vertebrate things. And McCoy's team found traces of a notochord, a vertebrate thing. They also found traces of gills, a fish thing, another vertebrate thing. And then they went on to say that lampreys are most likely their Dude, my cat right now. They also went on to say that lampreys are most likely their closest living relative, a type of jawless fish. So that was a point for the vertebrates. A second team that same year found melanosomes in the Tully's eyes. Melanosomes are little melanin storage sacs. The team argued that these are complex tissue structures that are only really found in vertebrates. So based on their eyes, this backed up the first vertebrate study. But then, the next year, paleontologist Lauren Salin and her group at UPenn stated they were totally wrong. She said, quote, the last thing the Tully monster could be is a fish. They argued that plenty of invertebrates have evolved complex eye structures, and even eyes have evolved dozens of times. So you can't rule out the invertebrates. Salin's team found that the Tully monster had cup eyes rather than complex eyes. Cup eyes are simpler eye structures that are always found in invertebrates. No vertebrates have them because all vertebrates have complex eyes. So then that seemed to be a point for the invertebrates. And then in 2019, another research group backed up the invertebrate study led by Chris Rogers at Stanford. They used a particle accelerator called the Stanford Synchrotron Radiation Light Source, which again, shoot the fossil with radiation, figure out the chemicals inside. They decided to take samples of vertebrates and invertebrates that are living today. And they analyzed the zinc to copper ratio in their eyes, again, with the fucking elements. Turns out that vertebrates have a higher zinc to copper ratio than invertebrates do in their eyes. And the eyes of a Tully monster, Koya, please. 
and it turns out that the eyes of a Tully monster had a ratio most similar to the invertebrates. So another point for invertebrates. But in 2020, McCoy's team doubled down with lasers and used them to figure out the chemical makeup of some of the tissues in the Tully. Invertebrates have something called chitin in their harder tissues. While vertebrates have certain proteins and keratin found in their backbone, and the team found traces of those proteins and keratin. So another point for vertebrates. And what are we left with? Absolutely no idea. Maybe even more confused than before. Tell me what you think, because I, I, I don't know. But that's the end of my first YouTube video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I've really enjoyed making it. After getting used to TikTok for two years, it's really nice to be able to talk at a normal rate where I don't have to sound like I'm late for work all the time. I have tons of long form videos planned for the rest of the month that line up with a short form series that I'm doing on TikTok and Instagram called Spooky Specimens. So if you're interested, you can go check them out, but I'm also gonna put them together in uh, little weekly compilations to put on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss my next long form video coming later this week. And for now, stay curious. The world has a lot for us to learn. See ya!